What is going on everybody? Today on Dylan Talks Tone, we're looking at the most expensive Squire Stratocaster ever made, I think, up to this point. You can correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but I think at $599 US, at the time of making this video, this is the most expensive Squire there has ever been. And uh, what I want to do is dive into this thing nice and deep today and see if it is worth it. Okay, so let's dive into this thing. Um, a couple of things. First, before we get into it, I will say uh, some notes on the pickguard itself. It's a really nice aluminum pickguard. The one thing I'll tell you is some people might not like the sharp edges. They are actually kind of sharp. And if you were to take some sort of file to them, it would be bare. I have heard reports of folks say that the gold comes off the screws very easily, but I've not experienced that myself. The guitar is only a few days old. Um, a couple other things too is we talked about this in our Highwood Saddles review and Strat setup video that the little set screws here to adjust the string height are, you know, kind of sharp and, but that's a normal Strat kind of thing. Um, weight of the guitar we talked about, seven pounds, uh, four ounces, I think. One of the things I found interesting, and people will get into this with various woods uh, of guitars, and people say, well, cheap guitars are kind of all over the place. Um, if you look at the, if you go to Sweetwater and you look at their little thing where you can order all these guitars and pick your weights, I think there was like seven or nine or something ounces between the lightest one and the heaviest one. 
which sounds like a lot, but when you go and look at other strats and other guitars, it's about the same variance. Um, and so this wood, this NATO wood falls right in the same weight and falls right in the same category. Uh, let's see what the grain looks like when we get this neck pocket off though. I'm very curious about that. Okay, let's go ahead and get this thing apart. Okay, so first thing we notice in here uh, when we, so kind of leaning towards uh, the Squire side of things is the trim block is just this cheap little pop metal thing. That's normal for Squire stuff. Um, you know, like I said, it's kind of a, kind of a normal thing. This is interesting that this is like a, some kind of, I don't know if this is magnetic or not, if it's copper or what it is. It's a weird color. I've never seen that for the Strat trim claw three springs the the track the tremolo action feels pretty decent i've not floated it or anything but this is pretty much average par for the course finish just kind of looking at some of this stuff in here for one of these guitars and honestly for even like a made in mexico guitar it's would be about par for the course as well you can see on the screw holes here, it's hard to see from your angle, but the finish isn't, it's not some kind of like 1980s, 17 foot thick finish. You can tell they've actually color sanded and buffed it. Um, and under these lights, you can just see a little, a few little imperfections. It's not terrible, but you can just tell they've color sanded and buffed it. Um, there's a little bit of orange peel right here on this style line to the belly cut but that makes makes a little sense for the price point of the guitar actually but all this stuff seems fairly average for one of these things okay one thing i like to look at when we're looking at um, cheaper guitars this kind of stuff is the pocket and the neck placement and fitment which seems really nice and tight actually for this type of net pocket, there's no wood on this side. So, but that seems pretty sweet. Looks like it's working pretty well. All right, let's pull this thing out. Let's look up underneath here. It's interesting that there is a shim on one side and you can see that this has been labeled for SQ40 Strat um, and a bunch of numbers and letters. I was wondering if they were reusing Jaguar necks or Jazzmaster necks, which I kind of suspect, but then they put this label in here too, which is interesting. We'll get to the neck in a minute. So this wood, this NATO wood is actually, um, it's kind of a type of mahogany. It's in the same genus as mahogany. So it, it's not a ter people think it's a terrible tone wood. And I want to do a whole video on this, but basically just because you haven't heard of a wood before doesn't make it bad. Um, cause that's what happens. I think people tend to think that, well, it's not mahogany, alder, swamp ash. So they must be cheaping out. It could be, but it could be also availability where these guitars are made in Indonesia that it's easier to get this wood and it might be a species. I know this to be the fact with some types of poplar, that it's easier to get that species more consistently and of higher quality in that part of the world. It has nothing to do with cheapness as much as it does availability. So I think that's probably the case with NATO as well because it's a East Asian wood and it's very similar in structure and stuff to other woods that they already use. So I wouldn't flip out about the fact that this is not alder or swamp ash. Okay. So we've got a strat neck here. We've got the big peg head. I know a lot of people don't like that, but I think it's really cool. Uh, the tuners have been high quality so far. I haven't worried it had any slipping problems, nothing like that. The logo is done really, really well underneath the poly finish, which is cool. Um, metric, what you call there? Um, Allen key. I don't remember if this is a bone nut or not. Maybe I'll throw that on the screen to explain. Okay, so the whole being able to shine a turd thing and people are like, this is just a bunch of stuff put on a guitar to make it more expensive. Well, here's what I will tell you. Um, block inlays and binding don't just jump onto a neck for free. 
it costs money and it takes a lot of work. A side benefit of that is this is the nicest neck I have ever played on a Squire guitar before. And I would actually venture to say that this neck and the way these, they're not quite hemispherical, but the fret finish on the end of these frets is the best fret work I have ever seen on a Fender guitar under $1,500. Um, so there's, there's a couple little spots that could be fixed here um, along the way, but overall, this thing is the best fretwork I have ever, ever seen on, a, on honestly, any Strat under $1,500, any Fender product or Squire product under 1500 bucks. It's amazing. I would say that a PRS Silver Sky uh, SE is probably better by a little bit or quite a bit actually. But as far as Fender products go, this is the best one. And I think because they bound it and the way the binding feels on the edge and the way they did the frets on the end right here, I really feel like this is one of the best feeling one of these ever. So is this just shining a turd? I don't think so. I think this part of the guitar is an absolute functional improvement to this instrument. And if it was the $180 over a regular Squire or whatever it costs over a regular Squire just because of this, sign me up all the way. I'll have another one. It's really, really good. It, it, this to me makes it worth it. Now, there are some of these squires that don't have binding on the edge and I have not played one of those, but I do have one coming in the future. So we'll know when we do that video. But man, I tell you what, this is fantastic. The nine and a half inch fretboard radius, the fret size is uh, bigger than vintage, but not humongous. Um, and it's done well all the way around. Like all the edges are just done properly. Like this is a really good neck. Um, I feel, one little edge fret thing here. In fact, I bet if we just fix that one right there. There was one other one. Oh, there it is right there. And that's it. I mean, that's, that's all the work that this neck needs. It is fantastic. So surprised. As soon as I pulled it out of the box from Sweetwater, I was just like, oh, wow, I really, really like this. And so I would say this is killer. And it actually looks really nice. Um, this Indian Laurel, in my opinion, looks more like Rosewood than, and performs more like Rosewood than Pale Pharaoh does. So I'm, I'm, all, I'm all for it. Uh, sign me up for the Indian Laurel stuff. I think it looks great. The inlays are finished nicely. There's no hard edges on them. You don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff. And there was no real fret buzzes or anything. There was a couple of little noisy things with the guitar that we'll get to now. Let's look at the pick guard, un underneath the pick guard and what's actually under the hood. As we pull this off, now a normal pick guard, you don't really have to worry about this a whole lot, but I've got a polishing cloth here because I wanna make sure that we don't scratch this guitar with the pick guard because you don't normally have to worry about that, but you do here. I'm going to go ahead and cut these wires. I just, I don't want to scratch the guitar and I wanted it further away from the guitar than your, um, yeah, you can tell that they've color sanded and buffed the guitar outside of, so there's some more imperfections and stuff underneath the pick guard which maybe on a Mexican guitar or an American guitar, they wouldn't do that. Um, but you can see the grain here in the wood now, uh, more pronounced. It is definitely more, um, eh, it's more like mahogany. It looks, looks a lot like mahogany. Okay, we've definitely got a, like a single hum hum or anyway, bigger route here. Can we put a humbucker? I don't know if we can put a humbucker in the neck position. I don't know if we could put a humbucker in the bridge and in the middle position. Definitely one in the bridge. You'd have to get a new pick guard and you wouldn't want to do that anyway. So no worries. Cool. Well, let's look at the pick guard. I haven't even flipped this thing over to see what's underneath. Uh, a couple of things before we do that. I noticed that obviously these are Alnico 5 pickups. 
uh, in here and I've also noticed that the radius of them is two uh, shorts on the outside and a tall in the middle. Um, I'm assuming they're trying to try to sort of match a nine and a half inch radius. This is like a bridge pickup from the early 60s. I remember them using this sort of um, radius for, so that's kind of interesting. Uh, the plastics are all common Squire stuff. And they're all Nico 5s in plastic bobbins. This is the first time I've had this flipped over. Um, and we've got the little baby Alpha Pots. That is a 22 cap. Um, the, I should say, the bridge, this, this is the bridge tone, and then this tone uh, is these two pickups. So that's pretty common right now. Don't need to put shielding on it because it is a shield because it's a metal pickguard. Now, one of the things I was having problems with with this guitar is when I strummed the guitar, I think it was the D string, it was making some sort of rattle and it wasn't coming from above the pickguard, it was coming from below. Like there was something loose and I think it might have been wires like vibrating against the pickguard. So um, we'll have to watch that when we put the guitar back together to make sure that the routing is good. So make sure that there's nothing rattling in there. It wasn't like a loose part on the guitar. I think it was just, like I said, something, you know, cause if something's rattling underneath here, it's um, more prone to that because to be heard because of the metal. Also, I think when we redo this, I'm gonna use rubber instead of springs to take out any kind of metallic-y kind of, you know. That being said, it's fine. It's totally fine. These pots are fine. They're a little stiff for my liking, but a lot of people like harder turning pots than I do. Yeah, I think this thing is pretty cool. Alnico 5 pickups. Um, I guess let's chat about the rest of the guitar or the guitar as a whole. So the downside to doing a video like this where we take the guitar all apart is now I don't have the guitar in one piece to talk about. So um, is this $599 American at the time of making this video, the most expensive Squire ever made, worth the extra hmm, 150 bucks or so uh, than the regular Squire like a classic vibe, for example. Um, I have to think so. I have to think so. First of all, it's the only way you can get one of these cool metal pick guards. And if that's something that you're into, I really, really think it's really cool. Um, the guitar is really quiet because of it, because you don't have to shield anything. Uh, let's talk about pickups. And eh, we'll talk about mods in a minute. We'll talk about a couple of other things that I really like about it. We discussed the neck. Um, this is the best Squire neck there ever was period. I think it's fantastic. The profile is great. It's very similar to the classic vibe things. So if you're familiar with that, um, the quality of it is great. The fretwork was great. You saw the two little problems we fixed. This right here is worth the price of admission. I don't care about anything else. I don't care about the gold hardware, which I think is probably going to go brown faster than you might want. Uh, I don't care about the gold hardware, but you have to get the gold hardware to get this neck. This neck is worth the price of admission. This neck is worth whatever that guitar costs over the cheaper one. I'm telling you, I love it. It is really, really good. It's what makes the guitar good. Um, that's why I got the Jazzmaster coming. So look out for that video because we'll do the same thing with the Jazzmaster version of this guitar. I got that this neck with that one too because it's it's so good. Uh, anyway, um, this is worth it. This is worth the entire thing. Okay, let's talk mods. Okay, let's talk mods and anything that I would look out for. The finish on the guitar is really good. The more I look at it, I can see some little things that probably would you just hit them with some rubbing compound and they'd probably be okay. Um, that is this particular guitar. I don't know that every guitar is gonna be like that, but just look out for that. The other thing I would look out for, like I said earlier, is when you're working on the guitar, don't scratch your guitar with your pick guard because that is something that is possible to do with a metal pick guard. This is actually kind of sharp. Fender, you could stand to put a little softer edge on that, uh, which is sort of weird. Um, the pickups. 
I'm a pickup guy. I'm going to replace the pickups in almost every guitar I ever lay my hands on because I'm a pickup guy. Does that make these pickups bad? These pickups are Strat pickups. Nothing more, nothing less. The guitar sounds like a Strat. It sounds, that's it. You heard throughout the video, the little sound samples. It sounds great clean. I think new pickups could make this guitar better. They're not terrible. Uh, like a classic Vibe Tele, for example, the pickups are not even playable in my opinion. This is not that. These are good. They're, they sound good. They sound like a Strat sound. I think you could have a better Strat if you had better electronics. So we're going to go ahead and put a set of pickups in this guitar. We're going to change out the normal Squire-y switch and the normal Squire-y electronics. Um, I don't know. We may have to actually drill the holes out in the pick guard a little bit bigger. Mike, don't call me while I'm, see I'm shooting and anyway, okay. Um, you might have to drill the holes out in the pick guard. When we do that video and we swap all this in, I will let you know. So make sure you subscribe so you know about that. Um, the other mods I would make is just make sure that you do a good setup on the guitar because all guitars come from their prospective retailers. This one comes from Sweetwater, so they do their, you know, they do their check to make sure that it all exists and that the action is relatively good and that the um, intonation is relatively close. But it could definitely, you could definitely need a setup for how you like to play the guitar. I like tens on my guitars. These have nines on. This has a nines on it, so. I would change that and then adjust the tremolo and stuff. So we may do that as well. I don't think it needs new tuners. I don't think it needs to a whole lot of anything, really. I think it's a great guitar and I think it is 100% worth $599. I know that guitars are getting more expensive. I know they are. It's just kind of how it is. A made in Mexico Strat is now 849 bucks at the time of making this video. I get it. Everything is getting more expensive. I think this guitar is fantastic. Let's talk about one more thing before we forget. This NATO bodywood. I know a lot of people poo poo this or however you want to say it on the Instagrams and on the internets and on the YouTubes all over the place, but it's a good guitar. Um, the body weight is fine. It's fairly consistent across the model as other models are also consistent. Um, it doesn't strip out or chip out or anything any easier, I don't think, than any other wood does. Um, I think it's a, I think it's fine. Um, it's a type of mahogany, more or less. And if you wanna argue about that in the comments, if you look up the genus of the wood, it's the same as like Honduran mahogany. So, you know, science is science. So yeah, I think it's awesome. I wouldn't worry about it. I, don't nerd out about this part. Just make sure that the guitar is playable and that it sounds like you want it to sound. So these are the best parts of that guitar. Um, I think they're pretty awesome. This might actually turn into the thumbnail for this video because I forgot to take a thumbnail photo before I took the guitar apart. These, this right here makes this guitar worth it. It does. It's really, really cool. I would definitely buy one. Um, that, like I said, I think you can get 10% off them right now in the, in the, there's a link in the description. Um, yeah, get, get one, get one, get the Strat, get the Tele, get one. I would recommend putting up with the gold finish and getting this neck. Anyway, thanks for hanging out. If you like guitar stuff, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the like button. We're going to have more videos with this guitar. I've got a jazz master coming in a couple of days and I've got a baritone guitar coming in this series and I've actually got a telly coming in this series uh, with the different necks. So make sure you hang out and we'll take those guitars apart too and see what's inside of them. We'll see you soon.